Have you ever wondered if those seemingly harmless medications sold at any pharmacy or even at the corner store could be seriously harming your health? Is frequent use of ibuprofen or paracetamol really risk-free? And what about the famous omeprazole, which many believe is just a stomach protector? Could it cause serious problems when used daily? And those cold remedies that promise quick relief, could they actually hide dangers for your heart? These questions are crucial because by the end of this video, I'll show you how the misuse of common medications can lead to complications in the heart, kidneys, liver, and even bones. And I'll share practical tips so you know exactly how to protect yourself. Hello, I'm Kenji Oshiro and this is the Global Health Guide channel. Subscribe so you don't miss content that can transform your health with clear, safe and up-to-date information. Many people believe that only expensive, experimental or complex named drugs are dangerous. The reality is different. The medications that cause the most problems are precisely those used most in daily life. Ibuprofen, diclofenac, paracetamol, omeprazole, and nasal decongestants are among the most consumed drugs worldwide. The issue isn't their existence, but how they are used. Take ibuprofen and diclofenac, for example. They belong to the family of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs known as NSAIDs. They're popular because they work quickly, a headache, a fever, knee inflammation, and in no time, you feel relief. But that relief comes at a cost. When used without guidance, these drugs can cause the body to retain fluids and sodium. For those with a weakened heart, high blood pressure, or kidney issues, this can be devastating. It can trigger heart failure, worsen existing kidney disease, or even cause an acute crisis. Moreover, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs directly harm the stomach. Here's a fact many don't know. The stomach produces between 1 and 3 litres of acid daily, a liquid so strong it can corrode metals. What prevents this acid from destroying the stomach itself is a protective mucus layer. Ibuprofen and diclofenac reduce this protection, leaving cells vulnerable. The result can be gastritis, ulcers, and in severe cases, even stomach perforations. Another lesser known risk is the increased chance of bleeding and even heart attacks in patients with cardiovascular diseases. Many specialists avoid prescribing these medications for those with a history of heart problems precisely because of this link. And that's not all. Prolonged use of these drugs can also impair kidney function. The mechanism is simple. They block substances that allow blood to reach the kidneys properly. When this blood flow decreases, the kidneys suffer, especially in more vulnerable people, elderly individuals, those who are dehydrated or those already ill. This means that often someone seeking relief for pain may unknowingly put vital organs at risk. But what about paracetamol? It's seen as a safer alternative since it doesn't harm the stomach or increase bleeding risk. Yet it has its own traps. The main danger of paracetamol is to the liver. Above the maximum daily dose of 4 grams, this drug starts to inflame and destroy liver cells. In extreme cases, it can lead to fulminant liver failure, a life-threatening condition that often requires a transplant. Even at correct doses, people with pre-existing liver or kidney problems need medical guidance before using paracetamol regularly. This shows that no medication is completely harmless. And what about the famous omeprazole, known as a gastric protector? It's so widely used that millions take it daily as if it were a vitamin. Omeprazole and similar drugs in its family do have their purpose. They are effective in treating gastritis, ulcers and reflux. However, when used for long periods without supervision, they start to cause concerning side effects. One of these is the poor absorption of nutrients that rely on stomach acidity to be processed. These include vitamin B12, iron, calcium and magnesium. Prolonged B12 deficiency can lead to anemia, fatigue and even neurological problems. Calcium deficiency weakens bones, increasing fracture risk. Low magnesium levels can cause cramps, muscle weakness and heart arrhythmias. And there's more. Chronic omeprazole use can inflame the kidneys, causing a condition called interstitial nephritis. This isn't rare for those working in hospitals. That's why the rule should always be the lowest dose for the shortest time necessary and only under medical supervision. Now, let's talk about another group that many take without a second thought decongestants. Those pills that relieve a cold or flu in a few hours, clear your breathing, and make you feel renewed. The problem is that many of these medications contain substances like phenylephrine or pseudoephedrine, which work similarly to adrenaline. 
they narrow blood vessels, raise blood pressure, and speed up heartbeats. For someone healthy, the risk might be small, but for those with hypertension or heart problems, these drugs can trigger serious crises. They can also cause insomnia, tremors, palpitations, and in some cases urinary retention in men with an enlarged prostate. What does all this mean? That common medications, the ones you find at any pharmacy, can indeed become silent enemies of your health if used carelessly. This doesn't mean they should be banned, but they must be respected. The first step is simple. Never exceed the recommended dose. The second is to avoid self-medication, especially for ongoing use. And the third is to always seek guidance from a healthcare professional before starting any treatment. Have you ever taken a medication thinking it was harmless only to find out later it could pose risks? Share in the comments. I want to hear your experience. And stay tuned because later in this video I'll reveal supplements that seem natural and harmless but can also put your health at risk when used without control. Have you noticed how easy it is to fall into the idea that if a medication provides quick relief, it can't do harm? That's a dangerous trap. The problem isn't the immediate effect, but what happens when the body pays the price for that relief? With anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen and diclofenac, we've seen they can harm the stomach, increase bleeding risk, destabilize the heart, and impair the kidneys. Paracetamol, on the other hand, attacks the liver when used in high doses or for long periods. And omeprazole, when used indiscriminately, hinders nutrient absorption and can inflame the kidneys. But what about antibiotics? That's another critical point. How many times has someone with a sore throat, fever or white patches on their tonsils rushed to take antibiotics on their own? What almost no one remembers is that about 80% of sore throats in adults are caused by viruses. In other words, in 8 out of 10 cases, antibiotics do absolutely nothing. Taking antibiotics for a viral infection is like calling a plumber to fix a burnt-out light bulb. It doesn't solve the problem and brings consequences. Antibiotics don't distinguish between bad and good bacteria. They also destroy the bacteria in your gut that protect your body. When this happens, the gut microbiota becomes unbalanced. The intestinal barrier weakens, allowing food fragments and toxins to enter the bloodstream. The result is an inflamed body with a more dysregulated immune system and greater vulnerability to diseases. Another risk of indiscriminate antibiotic use is the rise of bacterial resistance. Bacteria exposed improperly learn to defend themselves. Over time, they stop responding to treatment, and simple infections can become serious threats. This is a public health issue that already worries experts worldwide. So what's the right approach? Antibiotics should only be used when there's a real suspicion of a bacterial infection confirmed and monitored by a doctor. Taking them just in case or because a neighbor or friend recommended it doesn't help. Every case is different and what works for one person may pose risks for another. And since we're talking about silent risks, we also need to look at supplements. There's a common idea that because they're natural or vitamins, they can't cause harm. But that's far from the truth. One of the most striking examples is vitamin D. Yes, it's essential for strong bones, immunity and various body functions. But in excess, it can become toxic. High doses of vitamin D increase calcium in the blood, and this calcium can deposit in the kidneys and arteries. The result? Painful kidney stones, stiffened blood vessels, and even the risk of coma in extreme cases. The correct approach is simple. Check vitamin D levels in the blood and supplement only when necessary with medical guidance. Vitamin C is another classic case. Popular for treating colds, many believe taking mega doses, sometimes even injectable, is harmless. But the truth is, excess can cause diarrhea, abdominal pain, and what few know, kidney stone formation. The best way to get vitamin C remains through food. Fruits like oranges, kiwis, acerola, and even guava provide more than enough in a natural and safe way. Calcium supplements also deserve attention. They can be helpful in cases of proven deficiency or for people with osteoporosis, but when used unnecessarily, they tend to accumulate in the arteries, contributing to atherosclerosis. That's why it's ideal to get calcium from foods like green vegetables, seeds, nuts, and natural dairy products. Additionally, combining calcium with vitamin K2 is important to ensure this mineral is directed to the bones, not the arteries. And we can't forget the so-called weight loss supplements. Many hide dangerous substances like thyroid hormones or potent diuretics. They might make the scale show a few pounds less in a few days, 
but this comes at the cost of dehydration and hormonal dysregulation. The result can be disastrous, kidney function collapse, severe thyroid changes, and even heart arrhythmias. In other words, even what seems healthy and natural can be dangerous when consumed without guidance. Here's an important reflection. Feeling healthy doesn't mean you're truly healthy. Many silent diseases like atherosclerosis or certain cancers begin years or even decades before showing symptoms. That's why self-medication and indiscriminate supplement use can accelerate invisible processes that later become serious. The message is clear. Before using any medication or supplement, ask yourself, do I really need this? Is there a medical indication? What's the right dose? How long should I use it? These simple questions can prevent serious complications. Have you ever been surprised to find out that something considered natural could pose health risks? Share in the comments. I want to hear your opinion. And later in this video, I'll show you how simple, natural habits can replace the use of common medications in many cases, helping to control pain, inflammation, and even cold symptoms. You'll be amazed at how effective such accessible solutions can be. Have you ever stopped to think about how often we turn to medications on impulse when there are simple natural alternatives to relieve everyday symptoms? It's impressive how small lifestyle changes can reduce the need for drugs and in turn bring lasting benefits to the body. A clear example is with colds and flu. It's common for someone with nasal congestion to head straight to the pharmacy for decongestants. But as we've seen, these medications can raise blood pressure, cause palpitations and even urinary retention in some people. What few know is that proper hydration, steam and nasal saline washes can provide similar relief without exposing the body to these risks. The logic is simple. When the body is well hydrated, the mucus that builds up in the sinuses becomes less thick and drains more easily. This reduces head pressure, relieves nasal obstruction and even eases pain. Inhaling steam from hot water, for example, is an old and effective practice because it helps loosen trapped secretions. Nasal washes, when done correctly, clean the airways and improve breathing. The same reasoning applies to muscle or joint pain. Instead of always relying on anti-inflammatories, you can use strategies like warm compresses, gentle stretching, regular physical activity, and even natural resources like turmeric, combined with black pepper, which has proven anti-inflammatory effects in studies. Another safe option is consuming foods rich in omega-3 like fatty fish, flax seeds and chia seeds which help modulate inflammatory processes in the body. Moreover, gut health plays an essential role in how the body handles pain, inflammation and even allergies. When the gut microbiota is balanced, the immune system works better and chronic inflammation decreases. This means that taking care of your diet can reduce not only digestive issues but also the risk of cardiovascular, kidney and even autoimmune diseases. Including probiotics like kefir, kombucha and natural yogurt with live cultures, along with fibre from fruits, vegetables and legumes is a practical way to strengthen this natural defence. Another important point is vitamin D. Instead of relying on supplements without evaluation, the best way to maintain adequate levels is through moderate sun exposure, a few minutes a day, always respecting your skin's limits. This contact with the sun activates the body's natural vitamin D production, which supports immunity, bones, and even hormonal balance. When supplementation is necessary, it should always be guided by tests and a doctor's prescription. Speaking of supplements, it's worth reinforcing. None of them should replace a balanced diet. A diet rich in green vegetables, varied fruits, seeds, nuts, legumes and quality proteins already provides most of the nutrients the body needs. This means that before spending on capsules and bottles, it's best to review what's on your plate every day. And about frequent headaches, often attributed to stress or tension, it's common to see people using painkillers almost daily. What few know is that hydration, proper sleep and stress management are far more effective strategies in the long run. Breathing techniques, work breaks, regular stretching and even practices like meditation can drastically reduce headache frequency. Another aspect that deserves attention is self-medication in cases of fever. Fever, in most cases, is a natural mechanism of the body to fight infections. Instead of immediately reaching for paracetamol or ibuprofen, often the best approach is to rest, hydrate, and let the body do its work. Only when the fever is very high, persistent, or accompanied by warning signs is the use of fever reducers truly justified. This brings us to a fundamental principle. 
Medication isn't candy. Even the most common ones sold over the counter must be used cautiously at the lowest effective dose and for the shortest time possible. Safety doesn't come from how easily they're purchased, but from properly assessing each situation. The good news is that, in many cases, there are effective natural alternatives. Ginger, for example, helps reduce nausea and has anti-inflammatory effects. Garlic has recognised antimicrobial properties. Honey can soothe an irritated throat. And when combined with healthy habits, like drinking plenty of water, eating a fibre-rich diet and sleeping well, they significantly reduce the need for medications. Of course, medications have their place and can save lives when used correctly. The problem arises when they become routine without necessity. The human body is wise and has natural defence and repair mechanisms that need to be respected. Here's the final message. Before taking any medication, ask yourself if you really need it or if there's a safer alternative. Over-reliance on pills can create problems that could be avoided with simple measures. Now, I want to hear from you. Which of these natural habits have you tried to replace medication use? Share in the comments because your experience can help others. And if this content resonated with you, share it with those who need this information. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and help spread health and knowledge.